So this is now the final step on the creation of the character. And we're going to start by texturing the face. So the first thing I'm going to do is, following the concept art, I'm going to change the colors of the eyes of the character into brown. And throughout all the texture creation, I'll always have Studio Max open. So I can jump between the Photoshop file and the 3D file and see how the progress is going and how it actually looks. So I've started by applying a basic layer of skin color and put it as color so it changes the actual tone of the black from the radiosity. And then another one on top is multiply. I'll probably be tweaking around these colors as we go, but for a starting point it's very, very useful to have an idea. So my first step is usually to get some tones into the basic skin color. So I'm placing some reds where there's more blood accumulated in the face and some blues where we have more bones with very, very light brush strokes, not really worried if they go out of place. I just want to break the pattern of the basic color. And once I'm happy with the results, I'll make this layer very, very light, so it's barely noticeable. And now I'm going to get the original concept art. So I can compare the skin tone they're using to the skin tone I have. So I can do any adjustments required so they match a lot better. And then clean up the reds and the blues once more so they're not that strong and they stay very, very light. So I'll import the mesh into ZBrush. And I'll do some projection painting very, very quickly just to have an idea of where the eyebrows are going to be in the head. I'm using Z AppLink, another plugin for ZBrush, and personally I think it's a very useful method to jump between Photoshop and ZBrush just to have an idea of where things are actually projected without having to calculate for the distortion. So I'll isolate the eyebrows from the mesh, paint them in, see how they actually look in the mesh, and we can see there's no symmetry, so I'll recreate the symmetry and then adjust them to fit the bone structure of the character. Once I have the average location of where they'll be, I can go back into Photoshop and adjust the paint so they fit exactly where they should. I'll also use the normal map since it has a lot more contrast than the AO to know where are the, the extrusions in the head. In this case, the eyebrow area, since it's very prominent, so I can adapt the eyebrows to them. And now I'm starting to paint the eyebrows. I have no idea why, but I thought they should be blue. And later on, when I paint the hair into brown, I'll obviously change them back to the brown color. At this point, I'm really not sure if the details I'm doing will actually help the mesh, but this is like an iterative process, so later on I'll, I'd come back and I'll revisit the eyebrows and I'll simplify them or change them completely until I think they fit the head. And now I'm starting to darken some areas on the character following the concept to make the face feel more alive and bring out the most relevant areas and the hard edges. So I'm using once again the normal map as a guideline to know where the different creases are.
I'm also always jumping between Photoshop and Max to see the results of what I'm doing. It's very important to understand how this is actually affecting the mesh. For this head, I'm always using uh, an airbrush. Uh, I used a couple of different brushes when doing the base textures with the reds and the blue because I wanted to get a plastic look to it, but now. So when you do it in Photoshop, you should understand how a normal map works. So each channel represents a different effect in terms of color information. The red channel is from left to right, the green channel is up and down, and the blue channel is depth. Also, I'll adjust so when the you jump between each eyebrows channel, you so they better fit understand. the skeletal structure of the character. And this is one of the advantages of working on twice the resolution of the final texture. So even though I'm doing distortions and the eyebrows are going to lose resolution, they will have enough resolution. So in this example I'm painting, I ended up getting, once I'm happy with the result the texture is going, I've turned the hair on, so I can actually see how the hair and the body texture all work together to create the character. Once I feel the head has reached a good stage in terms of texturing, I'll jump down to another part of the body and work on the rest of the texture so I can see how everything blends together. For example, the blue eyebrows will have to be turned brown. And it's also quite important to know how to measure your work. So I don't spend three days doing a head texture and then I don't have time to do the shoes. So knowing how to pace yourself and measure how long each task will take becomes a really relevant part of a modeler in production so you are sure you be able to make your character be as good as possible on the time you have. For the hair work we have one of those situations where the rendering of the AO wasn't as perfect as possible. So the first step is to clean up the AO. Since it's a black and white image and values it's quite easy to go there and just airbrush the areas that need cleaning. So for the hair, I know I'll have to do strands that follow the flow of the hair. So I've placed the UV map as a reference, so I know how the geometry is folding. And once again, I've used the normal map as a guideline, so I know which way they should go and where do they meet. So I'll start by building up layers of different tones. First, I'll start with the darker ones that will define the most important areas of the hair. Then some brighter ones and then the highlights. Always jumping between Max and Photoshop and always making sure the textures are in different layers so I can easily play around the way they will blend with each other. I'm changing my light setup in Mac so I can see how the results look better on the back since there wasn't much light there. Something I like to do a lot is painting by erasing. So I put extra lines that I know will need to be removed and then I delete them with the same style of stroke that I did to place them. So this adds a lot of variety and helps eliminating the digital airbrushing or brush stroke effect that you usually get. For the tones, I'm going with the concept art that I've placed on the Photoshop file that I'm working on. So I'm picking the colors from there and adding the layers based on the different strands that I feel compose the hair. After that is done with a small highlight brush I paint tones to darken and brighten areas so we get a softer transition between the different areas.